this is AP Physics B 2006 um, exam and I will let you read the question and try to understand and write everything that is given. So pause the video, take your time, write down everything is given, understand the question and then you can listen to me reading it. An ideal spring of unstretched length 0.2 meters is placed horizontally on a frictionless table as shown above. One end of the spring is fixed at the other end as, and attached to the other end of the block mass 8 kilograms. So on the top you have one mass 8 kilogram. 8 kilogram block is also attached to a massless string and passes over a small frictionless pulley. A block of mass 4 kg is the one that hanging, hangs from the other end of the string. When this spring and the block system is in equilibrium, the length of the spring is 0.25 meters. So it looks like we started with 0.2 meters and now it's 0.25 meters. So when they attach the mass of 4 kg, the spring stretched 0.25 meters. And the 4 kg block is now 0.7 meters above the floor. On the figures below, draw the free body diagrams showing the and labeling the forces on each block when the system is in equilibrium. So when the system is in equilibrium, I have forces acting on the top mass. I have tension. I have the force of gravity. I have the normal force. And I have the force of the spring. On the mass that is hanging, you have the force of gravity. Let me make this one bigger M. And the tension force. So that's when it is in equilibrium. I redrew the forces for you for a certain reason, and I'm going to explain to you right now why. So when you do this on the AP exam, make sure that the length of this force is equal to the length of this force so because normal force and the force of mg they are balancing each other and they cancel each other also make sure that the length of the tension is equal to the length of the spring because they say the blocks are in equilibrium so that means the spring force is equal to the tension force and also make sure that your tension force here is the same as the tension force there uh, the length of them close to each other but the as much as possible and mg is also equal to the length of the tension because it is an equilibrium so for a part they ask you to calculate the tension in the spring in the string the tension in the spring is equal to to the mass that is hanging um, on the site so your tension is equal to m G, when it is in equilibrium, there is no acceleration, the objects are not moving. So you have um, the tension acting up, little mg is acting down, and they are canceling each other. So I can say, and the mass is 4 mm -hmm. kilogram. And on the P exam, you can use little g as equal to 10. So your tension is equal to 40 um, newtons. Next question B is asking you... Um, to calculate the force constant in the spring because the force of the spring is equal to the force of tension and has a formula so I can say let me write this part A this part B so your spring force has a formula of negative kx and because negative is just telling you that it's opposing the action that you're doing to the spring. So if you stretch spring in one direction, 
the spring force is actually in the opposite direction so you don't have to plug in this negative into your formulas every time you calculate so your spring actually let's do it through the second uh newton's law so you could say f net we should have done a as well this way f net is equal to m a in this case it's the big m a big m a um, the net force is, I'm going to say tension is the positive, minus the force of the spring, and equals to zero because it's in equilibrium. So your tension force is equal to the spring force. That means 40 is equal to K and X. And I'm going to look back to the problem and see what um, my X is equal to. They tell me that initially the spring was only 0.2 meters. And after the block was, little block was attached to the right side uh, and hanging on the side, the spring stretched 0.25 meters. So that means 0 0.05 meters was the um, stretch of the spring. So my X is 0 0.05. So I can calculate that K is equal to 40 divided by 0 0.05 which is 40 and 2 minus 0 if I multiply by top and bottom top and bottom by 100 so k is equal to 800 newtons per meter so that would be your answer for b calculating the um the that was our calculate the force constant of the spring now for c or well, actually for c right that was for c b was so this was b actually this was b this is our b this is our c And A was showing the forces. Now for D part, calculate the time takes taken by the four kilogram block to hit the floor. Um, to, oh, the string is cut. So what they're doing now, they cut the string. They cut the string, and the block is gonna fall down. So the block is 0.7 meters above the ground. Calculate the time taken by a four kilogram block to hit the string. Um, I'm gonna do it so for D part. I'm gonna do it through conservation of energy. So the block is 0.7 meters above the ground and has a potential energy of mass G mg and h which is 0.7 so that gives me 28 joules of energy by the time the block hits the ground all this potential energy is going to be converted to the kinetic energy and potential energy is going to become zero and equals to one half the mass v squared and equals to 28. So V is equal to the square root of 14 meters per second, which is 374 meters per second. And they ask us calculate the time it takes to hit the floor. Okay, I found only the velocity it's gonna take to hit the floor. So I'm gonna do the time. The time is equal to change of the velocity over the acceleration if I use the acceleration formula. And in my case, acceleration is acceleration due to gravity. The final velocity is 374. And the initial velocity was zero before the block was cut off from the string. And acceleration is 10, so it gives me 0 0.374 seconds. 
for the next question, they ask you to calculate the frequency of oscillation of the 8 kilogram block. So for E, I need to calculate the frequency, but the frequency is the reciprocal of the period. So if I find the period, I can calculate the frequency. So the period is um, for the spring is 2 pi, the square root of mass over spring constant. So I have 2 pi, the mass is 8, and k, a k is, we just calculated, 800. So the period is equal to 0.623 seconds. So that is my period, the time it takes to do one oscillation. Then the frequency is equal to 1 over that number, which is 1.6 hertz. And the last question they ask you, calculate the maximum speed attained by the 8 kilogram block. So I need to calculate the maximum speed. So when the block is stretched by uh, 0 0.05 meters, it has maximum potential energy. So maximum potential energy of the spring that um, the spring holds in it when it's stretched is equal to the formula one half k x squared when so the block is in this position somewhere then when the block gets back to equilibrium it has maximum velocity and the spring has no more potential energy so all this potential energy is gonna go to the kinetic energy of the block and this is what we want to find, maximum kinetic energy of the block. So I can set up potential energy of the spring is equal to the kinetic energy of the block. So potential energy of the spring is one half kx squared, or change of the potential energy of the spring is equal to kinetic, change of the kinetic energy of the block. And um, that is gonna be transferred into one half m v squared. I can cancel one half and one half, and what I have k is 800, x is 0 0.05 squared equals to mass is 8 kilogram and v squared. So I can find velocity is equal to 0.5 meters per second. So that's the maximum velocity of the block.